Hi, I'm Franco Luna Puma Podcast. You're listening to Teka Teka News. Balitang thinking, hindi breaking. In this episode... Now it's estimated by the United Nations that we have a deficit around the world of 1.8 billion people not living in adequate housing. And 1 billion of them living in informal settlements. By the end of the decade, we will have 3 billion people not living in adequate uh, housing. We'll speak to some inspiring startups finding solutions to the housing crisis in the most unlikely places. Asia Pacific is also home of half of the world's informal settlers. And the pace of urbanization is also increasing and growing in our region. And uh, this is aggravating the crisis of not having adequate housing in urban settlements. That's Luis Noda. He's vice president of Asia Pacific at Habitat for Humanity and was in town recently for a forum. The housing deficit is increasing around the world. Moreover, if you live in Asia and the Pacific, you are twice as likely to be impacted by a natural catastrophe. However, we also cannot ignore the fact that the construction industry in general is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. In 2018, some 4.5 million people were homeless or living in informal settlements in the Philippines. 3 million alone were in Metro Manila. The government committed to an ambitious goal of building 1 million houses each year. But in reality, just 200,000 houses are actually produced annually. So Habitat for Humanity is trying to fill the gap through an accelerator program called Shelter Tech, which is all about finding innovative solutions for affordable housing. Think upcycled construction materials, modular homes that are weather resilient, innovative water treatment systems, etc. Here's one example. Billion Bricks is a Singaporean startup originally founded as a nonprofit. They can build solar homes whose roofs are almost entirely solar panels. Listen to Dennis Lucindo, the managing director of Billion Bricks. We've also found that our design for the solar roof makes it about 5 degrees cooler as compared to a tin roof and very much quieter when it rains hard. Everybody here knows that when it rains hard on a, hard, on a tin roof, it's very noisy. Dennis says their plan right now is to build a community of 30,000 net zero homes in the Philippines over the next five years. This will be their first large-scale net zero community in the world, covering 16 hectares of land, though they're keeping the exact location under wraps for now. Basically, a net zero home is one that makes as much electricity on site as it uses. So you offset everything you consume. By their estimate, one billion bricks community can offset 6,000 tons of CO2 emissions annually. We benefit both the homeowners by making home ownership about 20% cheaper in terms of direct cash back and free electricity. To the property developer, we provide an opportunity to upgrade real estate assets to be ESG compliant. That's short for environmental, social, and governance. And for the government, we are strongly aligned with national and local goals on ESG and economic development. To date, Habitat for Humanity's shelter tech platform has incubated more than 100 startups. And Billion Bricks has since made the jump into being a for-profit enterprise. But... So we're looking to build about 30,000 homes in the Philippines, representing about 300 megawatts over the next five years. Um, but there are many challenges. And some of those challenges we face are, in fact, on the regulatory side. One homegrown company found the answer in bamboo. This is the problem that we have in the Philippines. We need one million houses every year because there's a big deficit. We can only produce 200,000 houses when we need 1.2 million. The problem with scaling that solution that we have now is that all of our major construction materials are carbon emitters. Is that the challenge is not simply to find a way to build more houses fast, but to do it without causing further damage to the environment. That is where we come in. That's Earl Ferlales. He's co-founder and CEO of Cuba Modular, which makes houses out of engineered bamboo lumber. Earl is a graduate of chemistry and material science engineering from Ateneo de Manila. Our patent pending system allows us to produce a home that's this size, which is about 64 square meters, in five days. In our factory, 
we use one drop to deliver it to the site, and in three to five days, we're able to assemble it into a fully assembled home that you can use. Those aren't any regular houses, though. There are modular ones that are built from framed bamboo boards. And that matters because it only takes three years to grow bamboo that can be used for construction. That's compared to the 30 years it takes for traditional hardwood here in the Philippines. One ton of engineered bamboo has already harvested 600 kilograms of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere when it was growing. And in this form of engineered bamboo, can last up to 50 years. In 2018, Kubo was awarded first prize by the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors in the UK. He bested dozens of competitors around the world. Judges said Earl's idea stood out for its simple yet well-thought-out solution to the housing crisis. We're pausing for a quick break now. When we return, we talk to a startup using plant fiber and waste to make walls. Another interesting startup that stood out during the Habitat for Humanity Shelter Tech Forum is Affordable Abodes from Malaysia. The company uses something called kenafcrete, a proprietary material they invented by mixing fiber from the kenaf plant and waste biomass. They then use these to build prefabricated wall panels for houses. Here's Tim Tan, founder and CEO of Affordable Abodes. Because this biomass is grown locally, it's part of the circular economy, it really, really makes it a lot different from important, expensive imported materials. You've seen in COVID a lack of food, uh, not just a lack of shelter, but also the environmental damage that we've done in building our housing. We use up a tremendous amount of natural resources which are not renewable. Like bamboo, the kenaf plant used for the material is also fast growing. The company says it can finish a one-story home in a week. What we do is we build a frame, a ligate steel frame, which gives it structural support. And the infill of that is actually kanafcrete. Kanafcrete is made out of waste biomass and is used uh, with lime to make kanafcrete and infill the wall panels. These are structural wall panels and they're much lighter and faster to build with because they're prefabricated. These ambitious startups are just among 10 to come out of Habitat for Humanity's shelter tech program. Not everyone is into building houses. Others are focused on waste and water treatment. But all of them aspire to make safe, reliable houses more affordable across Southeast Asia. Habitat's VP for Asia, Luis Noda, says there's a particular sense of urgency in the region. There is a growing number of people that are part of the aging population. And that is making us redefine the conventional concepts of household vulnerability when it comes to housing. In many countries, the average housing vulnerable person, a person that could end up homeless, is a woman 50 years or older. The housing sector has generally struggled to attract and support entrepreneurship. We know that there is more that we can do. Innovations catered towards making housing affordable can be both sustainable and profitable. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. Again, I'm Franco Luna. This episode was edited by Nina Toralba and produced by Trisha Aquino. If you like this episode, share it with a friend or two. And of course, don't forget to follow Teka Teka and Puma Podcast wherever you listen. At para sa mga mahilig manood sa YouTube, Puma Podcast na rin po kami doon. Just search Puma Podcast and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for listening.